So getting on podcasts is one thing, but converting their listeners into new fans and subscribers and ultimately buyers is another. Today, I'm going to share how to make the most of your guest spots and gain subscribers and sales from your podcast interviews. Welcome to the Affiliate Guy podcast. If you want to grow your income, serve your tribe, and enjoy all the benefits of affiliate marketing and having your own affiliates, you're in the right place. Thanks for joining me today. Let's get started. So earlier this week, I shared how to get guest spots on podcasts. Well, it's one thing to get on a podcast. And it's another thing to actually convert those listeners into subscribers and customers. So as a part of this five-part episode or episode series on podcasts, I wanted to record a follow-up uh, episode to that one where I talk about how to be a guest on a podcast, what you should say and do to make the most of your guest spots and gain subscribers and sales from your appearance on podcasts. Like this is so important. Most people waste podcast appearances. And I talked to a talked to a friend of mine the other day. He, he's been on more than 50 podcasts in the last two years. And I was like, well, how many subscribers did you get? You know, if I'm just curious. And he was like, yeah, less than 500. I get about 10 per episode. I'm like, uh, dude, <laughs> he's like, well, it's worth it. I'm like, okay. You know, I mean, but I'm getting like a hundred per episode on average. Like even when I go on a small podcast, and maybe has a few hundred listeners. I'll get 30. When I go on a medium size, one, I'll get 50 or 60. When I go on a big one, I might get, you know, five, six, seven hundred, a thousand because of what I teach in this episode. So I'm going to break this into three phases. What do you need to do before the podcast? What do you need to do during and what do you need to do after? And some of these have nothing to do with getting more subscribers in, in like, they might not sound like that directly, but they have everything to do with it. So let's start with what do you need to do before the podcast? Number one, you need to sound good. You need to have the right equipment to sound good on the podcast. I'm not saying that my audio quality is literally the best in the world. I'm not using a pop filter right now. The pop filter the pop, pop, pop filter is that thing that makes those hard P's not go P when I say them or T. You know, I'm not using one right now. Why? Uh, because it broke. <laughs> the arm on it snapped the other day because apparently it doesn't like being dropped like seven feet onto the ground. It's uh, pop filters are usually plastic. You know, I and mean, this thing costs like 12 bucks. So I'm waiting for a new one from Amazon. Of course, it's taken like, you know, four weeks right now with COVID. But I think it'll still sound okay. I don't have the pop filter, but I do have the windscreen on there. So you shouldn't hear any background noise unless the kids up above make some loud sounds. You might pick up those and it's okay. You know, I'm not trying to make this perfect, but I feel like I sound good. I have a great microphone. If you want to know what microphone I use, just go to mattmcwilliams.com forward slash toolbox. My microphone recommendation and my windscreen recommendation and pop filters are all on that page. And so the windscreen just kind of muffles some of the background noise. Also, if, for instance, um, I'll give you an example. I'm very handsy. I talk with my hands. So you probably won't hear this, but if I take my hand and wave it next to the microphone, it creates a little bit of a draft. If I don't have this windscreen on, you'll hear a, you'll hear a little bit of a wind. But with this thing on, nothing. You can, I can literally take this outside. I slide it over my phone. I take a windscreen and I slide it over the microphone on my phone and I can have a conversation outside in heavy winds and nobody knows the wind's even blowing until it's, it's gotta be 30 miles per hour before anybody hears it. If you've ever been on the phone with somebody and you hear that, you know, like, what'd you say? Sorry, the wind was blowing five miles per hour. It's annoying. So you want that on. I have, um, you know, the studio is right next uh, to our, our gym area. And so in the gym is a dehumidifier constantly going about say seven, eight months out of the year. It's going right now. You won't hear it. You won't hear it because of the windscreen. So sound good. Get a good microphone. They're less than a hundred dollars. Get a windscreen, have it close to your mouth so that when you're recording, you sound good. Number two, listen to the show a little bit. You'll learn about it. Are there any questions that they always ask? Are there any segments or bits that the they use? Like one of my favorite shows, for example, ask each guest the same two questions to close the show. They've done that for like five or 10 years. And you want to know what these segments are so you can be prepared. What's the length? Do they always go 40 to 45 minutes? Then be prepared. 
and kind of keep that on your, you know, like, okay, we need to, we need to wrap this up. Yes. It's their job as the host, but you need to know that maybe this is not the time to tell the five minute version of the story. Tell the two minute version. Is there a certain style? Is it pretty laid back? Is it a little bit more formal? Do the guests tell stories? Does the host tell stories? What's the format, right? Number three, show up early for pre-chat. Just get there five minutes early. This is so important. They should, they should do that too. And they should have five minutes of pre-chat, even if you're just on time. But it gives you a little bit of extra time just to develop a rapport. Number four, offer to record on your end, especially if they're using Skype. If you record locally, it'll give you better quality. And so I always record locally, my side, and then send it to them after just so they have it. Just so they have it. If they don't need it, that's fine. But we do that just because, again, the quality is better. You're listening to a locally uh, hosted version because I'm recording this directly into my laptop. If I recorded this on Zoom first, that would be totally different. Number five, know thy stories. You need to have at least three good stories that you can unfurl at any time. Like being a great podcast guest, being any guest for anything, it isn't just about answering questions. It's about telling stories. You need to have at least three stories, preferably five to 10. We kind of have our thing called 10 core stories. These are the 10 core stories. I'm going to tell one later. Actually, when I talk about number eight, I'm going to tell a story. And you need, this is a story I developed over time. It took me a year to develop the story. But you want to have that. So that's the before part. What about the during part? Well, tip number six, use the host's name. You should know this. You should know this because you listen to those episodes like we talked about. But ask. I Unless it's a friend. You know, like, how is it pronounced? Stu? You know, is it stu? No. But if, if I don't, you know, I'm trying to find a name here. Um, let's see if I can find a name on my desk of like one of these books. No, nope, I can't find a name that I wouldn't know how to pronounce. But you know, I would, I would ask, Hey, just making sure it's pronounced Pete, right? (laughs) It's pronounced James, right? Dale. Is it pronounced Dale? You know, I'm just making sure, you know, and use the host name. Oh, so, so when I answer a question, I don't do that. I don't force myself to do this, but I intentionally do try to do it a couple of times. I'll just be like, you know, they'll ask a question. I'm like, Dale, that's a really good question. Like it reminds me of a time when I was younger, blah, blah, blah. And I'll go into that. Or, you know, and the thing is, the thing is, Dale, most people make the same three mistakes with yada, yada, yada. Um, or I'll ask, you know, if I'm like, Dale, how about you? Have you ever, have you ever thought, have you ever thought that? Or, you know, have you ever struggled with that kind of thing, Dale? Like, you know, just little things like that. Number seven, if possible, reference prior episodes. This is why, again, I, I encourage you to at least listen to one or two. Scroll through and, and say, you know, so if you're saying, so I'm looking right here. If uh, I'm looking at a book right here, you know, by Craig Ballantyne. I just interviewed him. Great interview, right? See, I referenced past episodes. But if I'm going to quote him, I'd be like, I would say something like, well, you know, my, my friend Craig Ballantyne, and I know he's been on your podcast, Dale, um, you know, blah, blah, blah. If it's contextually contextually relevant, do so in the conversation. Mention their past episodes. If you are a listener, then mention that. Like, you know, I would say like, yeah, Pat, I remember back when you interviewed, um, you know, you interviewed Ray Edwards. And, it, you know, I know in that episode, he shared his framework for copywriting and boom, 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 boom. So reference those prior episodes. Number eight, you need an opt-in. You need a lead magnet. You got to drive them to something. You've got to have something to send them to. Where can we find you, Matt? I'm not going to say mattmcwilliams.com. So when I was on the hustle and flow chart podcast, I said, go to mattmcwilliams.com forward slash hustle. I have a special thing there where you can download a free report that'll teach you this, this, and this. And, you know, it's, it's exclusively for your audience. Brand it if possible. I mean, at least like, we, we, we didn't change the colors like we sometimes do. We didn't put their logo, but it says, hey, hustle and flowchart listeners. So you want to create this lead magnet with a special URL, brand it a little bit to match their stuff, if at all possible. But what is a lead magnet? And what's a good lead magnet? Well, you've, you've seen them everywhere, right? Simply put, a lead magnet is, it's an incentive that we use to offer potential buyers 
in exchange for their email address. This is a way of growing your list. Now, the thing about lead magnets is if you don't have one, or if you're going to create one specifically for the audience, um, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll say the URL before it's even created. I don't know what my lead magnet's going to be. Maybe it's something we already have. Maybe it's something I'm going to create. Maybe I'm going to provide an outline of the steps that I'm sharing on the podcast. And I'll go back and, you know, I'll have them send me the interview, listen to the podcast, or not listen to the podcast, send that to my VA, have them create this, you know, this PDF. But the thing that people do is they try to make these super fancy in-depth lead magnets that take like 12 hours to create. It doesn't have to be like that. The key is that it must address an immediate and pressing need or want in your target audience. That's it. It doesn't have to be a comprehensive guide. It doesn't have to be a detailed manual. Those are usually the worst lead magnets because they're overwhelming. Like you want people to want your lead magnet because it addresses the immediate and pressing need or want. You want them to consume it quickly. You want it to, you want it to give them a quick win. That's a key. Like you want it to be actionable. You want it to give them what they want right now. Think of, think of a lead magnet as a solution to pain. They want to be better right now. They want to be better right now. They don't want a long-term solution like 37 exercises they can do for six months to solve their back pain, right? No, they want a Tylenol. They want an Advil. And so if, if I said, you, you came to me and said, my back's in pain, and I gave you a prescription for six, for six months of chiropractic starting next Tuesday, you would punch me. If I gave you some Advil, you'd say, thank you. Now what else can you do for me? Well, I can set you up with a chiropractor appointment. And it'll get better over time. Okay, great, because I'm feeling better already. So they have that quick win. They have that flash of success. They keep coming back for more. You know, my dad was the, uh, my dad, had, he was, he had the ultimate lead magnet. My dad, he was a golf instructor. Never owned a computer, never had a smartphone, never accessed the internet as far as I know. But my dad would go out on the practice tee at his golf course. And he would walk up and down walk up and down the practice tee. This is like being there in social media for, you know, it's tar- it's targeted marketing, right? Because he's on a practice tee at a golf course. And he'd see something and he'd go to someone and he would give them one tip, one little tip, something they could apply right now. They'd, they'd hit that one shot, that quick win, and they would turn him and go, oh my gosh, that's the best drive I've ever hit in my life. How do I give you money for more lessons like this? And then he'd sell them a thousand dollar golf instruction package. And so like I said, when they have that, quick win, when they have that flash of success, they keep coming back for more. Think of it like that. It's that. It's my dad. Give them the quick win. They keep coming back for more. So if you want to know more about lead magnets, I highly recommend checking out our list launch challenge at listlaunchchallenge.com. On day one of this seven day challenge, we walk you through step by step to create an epic lead magnet. We literally walk you through about an hour long lesson step-by-step on the different types of lead magnets that are going to work the best. By the end of that day, in fact, within one and a half hours of watching this lesson, sometimes even sooner, we've had people complete them while they're on the lesson. Okay. When we've taught this live, people have completed them on the lesson. I'm going to walk you through step-by-step, but that day you will have an outstanding lead magnet. That is a promise. And if you don't, if you follow what we teach and you still don't have an, you know, an outstanding lead magnet at the end of day one, unless you're start, starting at 11 o'clock at night. So we'll just say within 24 hours and a, really within about an hour and a half of actual work, you will have a lead magnet if you go to listlaunchchallenge.com and sign up. And if you don't, well, then we'll give you your money back. We'll just... Here you go. Now, there's a lot more in the List Launch Challenge. You'll learn how to grow your email list and uh, you'll learn how to actually get people to subscribe and all that stuff. There's so much more. But the lead magnet is the very first step. Very, very first step is creating that lead magnet. And the cool thing is you can use it on podcasts. You can use it on podcasts. You can use it on Facebook Lives. You can use it everywhere. So you've created the lead magnet. You've put them into a landing page. Now you want to put them into a funnel. This is where the sales are made. So they opt in. They've, they've, they've listened to you talk for an hour. They've now given you their email address to download this thing. You want to make them an offer. And typically this is going to be in the 7 to $37 range. Um, you know, if 
this is going to be something that's low priced, then you maybe want to have another offer at like a $97 price point. But you want to have things that you can sell to them that make it easier or faster to achieve the goal that they are trying to achieve. The thing they opted in for, how can you make it easier, faster, or take it to the next level? So this lead magnet will, will solve your pain. Okay. Well, if it's free, but for $37, I can solve it quicker. For $97, I can not only solve the pain, but make it where it'll never come back. You see what I'm saying? It's you want to put them into a funnel like that. Number 10, make sure you mention your podcast. They're podcast listeners. So talk about it. Talk about past episodes. You know, I would say something like, well, you know, my friend Craig, let's say they never interviewed Craig Ballantyne. My friend Craig Ballantyne, actually, I interviewed him a few a few weeks ago. He's the world's most productive man, is what they call him. And we talked about productivity during this COVID time. I would say something like, you know, yeah, you know, I just finished interviewing Seth Godin. That's actually coming up here in a couple of weeks uh, on the Affiliate Guy podcast. I'm really excited. And one of the things that he says is this. So make sure you mention the name of your podcast. Talk about a guest or two. If you have guests or talk about a topic or two, you know, it might be that they ask me about something. It's like, yeah, it's funny. I literally just recorded a podcast episode like a month ago. Uh, so I'm not going to go into all that. It's like a 45 minute podcast, but let me give you a couple of highlights from, and then definitely guys like go listen to that episode. Um, you know, Pat, is it okay if we link to that in the show notes? Absolutely. Great. Okay. So mention your podcast. You will get subscribers from that. Number 11. Oh, this is after we're moving on to after. So number 11, share the podcast, share some love, talk about how it was awesome to be on the podcast. Make sure you mention them on Facebook and Twitter when you share it. So they see that you're promoting your episode. This also helps it become very popular. And when they go look at their stats and see, man, that episode with, with, you know, Craig was the third most popular episode of the entire year. Then it should have him back on. Maybe we should do something else together. Maybe I should be an affiliate partner for him. Maybe we should do something to do some business with each other. He's very popular with my audience. Maybe we should do a webinar together. So share the podcast. And then lastly, number 12, send a thank you. Not an email, not a tweet, an actual handwritten note. Send a thank you. If you talked about a book on the podcast and they said, I've never read that. That's interesting. Buy the book form. Send it to them and say thank you. If there's some way you can just acknowledge them, handwritten note, a book, something like that, send a thank you. We'll go a long way. The goal here is to land a repeat appearance. Really, the goal is just to be a nice person, but also to land a repeat appearance. That's what you want. So like I said, if you want to learn how to create those epic lead magnets so you can follow what I shared in in number eight. Make sure to go to listlaunchchallenge.com. Also, if you need a good podcast player, I mentioned Pat Flynn earlier. If you need a good podcast player, check out Fusebox. That's what we're using and we freaking love it. It is amazing. And you can find that at mattmcwilliams.com forward slash Fusebox. Both of those will be in the show notes and both of those uh, will help you grow your business. So that's how to be a great podcast guest and how to grow your list and grow your sales by being on podcasts. In the next episode, I'm going to share with you how to monetize your podcast with affiliate marketing. So you don't want to miss that. Then we'll finish up next week in part five, how to use your podcast to grow your business. I'll see you in those episodes. And until then, go get them this week. Thank you so much for listening today. Remember to check out all of our deep dives into affiliate marketing at theaffiliateguide.tv. And if you have a question, ask it at asktheaffiliateguide.com. Who knows? Maybe you even be featured on an upcoming episode. And lastly, if you haven't yet, make sure to leave a rating and review wherever you're listening to this episode. See you soon.